the island of Sodor was entering its busy summer season. The weather was wonderful in the summertime, and the charming town, shops and beaches brought tourists and enthusiasts from all over the world. More visitors meant more passenger and goods trains, and a lot of coordination. This year, Sir Topham Hatt was anticipating record numbers of visitors due to the construction of a new airport near the big station. Airplanes from many different countries could now travel directly to the island of Sodor, which was convenient for tourists, but made the days very busy for the buses and the trains. Sir Topham Hatt realized early in the season that he needed more help to handle the heavy passenger traffic. The other railways were busy too, and it turned out that there was only one engine available. A diesel, and not just any diesel, but the same diesel who, when Stepney was visiting the island many years ago, had sucked a bowler hat into his air intake. Not him, said Gordon one morning to the other engines. It's disgraceful. Disgusting, put in James. Despicable, said Henry. Maybe he's changed, said Percy. It's been a long time. I highly doubt that, little Percy, grumbled Gordon. You just can't trust those big diesels. He said we were all out of date and tried to shove the duck and step near, but he got what was coming to him. Yes, added James, you can't trust big diesels. What about Boko? said Thomas. You told me just yesterday that you really liked him, James. I, started James, I meant... I face it, said Percy. You big engines are stuck in your ways. Let's give this diesel a fair chance. You never know. Sir Topham Hart might let him pull your express once in a while, Gordon, laughed Thomas. Haul the flying kipper, Percy chortled. You can jerk all you like, said Gordon. But the fact is that this diesel came here swanking about in the yard trying to prove that he was superior. You can't fix that kind of ego. Yes, agreed James. Thomas looked incredulous. Says you, I think the only egos on this railway belong to you three. Thomas and Percy huffed out of the sheds, leaving the three big engines feeling very cross. The diesel came the next morning, I bet reluctantly. He remembered what had happened the last time he came to the island and felt very awkward. I want to make a good impression this time, he told his driver as he sped smoothly down the line. I was young and foolish then. I learned my lesson. Of course, said his driver. Just be yourself and all will go well. I hope so, replied the diesel uncertain. Sir Topham Hatt greeted him at the big station. Thank you for coming on such short notice. Since the airport has been opened, we've had more passengers than ever before. I would like for you to help with the express while you are here. Yes, sir, he said. Good. Run along to the junction. There you will pick up Gordon's coaches to take the evening enthusiast service. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Diesel was happy to have work, but was nervous to see Gordon again. Gordon glared as the diesel approached. I don't know why Sir Topham Hatt needs a diesel like you to pull my coaches, but I guess I must do what I'm told. The diesel was hurt. Gordon steamed away without another word. The evening service went well, but the diesel felt defeated. Coming back was a mistake, he thought. Maybe I should just go back to the other railway. The next few evenings went much the same way, with Gordon fuming about his express being pulled by a diesel. The diesel kept telling himself to give it more time, but he was getting frustrated. One evening, the diesel arrived at the station to find that Gordon and the coaches were nowhere to be seen. 
We're right on time, and Gordon is too, said the Diesel. What's going on? The Station Master came up. With him was Sir Topham Hatt. You just miss Gordon, the Station Master said. He flew through the station without stopping. I've just received a message that he's stranded a few miles up the main line. Please take Sir Topham Hatt with you to see what's happened. Sir Topham Hatt boarded the Diesel, and they raced off to the rescue. They found Gordon sitting still on the line. Gordon normally filled up on water when he stopped at the junction, but he had failed to do so and had run dry. The passengers had crowded around him telling him what a bad engine he was. Sir Topham Hatt was very cross. Gordon, it was very reckless of you to speed past the junction, he scolded. Not only did you run out of water, but your passengers will now miss their boat for the evening enthusiast trip. I am sorry, sir, Gordon squeaked. Why did you not stop? Sir Topham Hatt continued. For a moment, Gordon didn't speak. He looked embarrassed. I I didn't want to leave my coaches with the diesel any more, so I decided that I should just take the passengers all the way to the boat myself. Sir Topham Hatt was livid. Not only am I disappointed in your lack of judgment, I am horrified that you will let your opinions of diesels get in the way of your duty to get your passengers to their destination safely. The boat company will have to refund these passengers their tickets and we will have to get them back to their homes. I am very, very disappointed with you, Gordon. Gordon looked depressed. Sir Topham Hatt turned to the diesel. I know it's late, but may I ask you to take these passengers back to their homes? The diesel beamed. Of course, sir. I would consider it an honour. And so it was arranged. The diesel trans Gordon's route back up the main line and got the passengers back home in record time. As the summer season calmed down, it was time for the diesel to return to the other railway. Thank you for your hard work, said Sir Topham Hatt. You have been much more dependable than some of my big engines. I know last time you were here we had some issues, but you have proven that you have learned your lesson. I will have to send your controller my highest recommendation. The Diesel was relieved. He had put his best wheel forward, had been himself, and was rewarded. We will miss you, said Thomas and Percy. Come back to visit soon. I will, said the Diesel. Gordon, on the other hand, was in disgrace. Sir Topham Hatt had given him limited privileges until he could learn to behave. You just can't trust those big steam engines, called the boys from Noah in particular. Yes, their egos are too big. They can't be fixed, called another voice. All Gordon could do was close his eyes and pretend they weren't there. <laughs>